Good morning, Centurion Vineyard family, and thank you for joining me for day four of our devotional series, The Words of Your Life. And today I'd like to take a look at the most important word and use of words in any believer's life, in anybody's life, really. And as I've sat working my way through this series, the thought has struck me that because our lives are so surrounded by, are so flooded by words, and as we previously mentioned, because they are so flooded by words, we don't necessarily pay too much attention to the words that we say or even the words that flood over us. We may have missed out on the importance and the specialness of the word and use of words that I'd like to talk about today. So let's begin by looking at the most special word ever. John starts his gospel message like this in John 1 verses 1 to 5. He says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. A few verses later in verse 14, he carries on and he says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Did you get that? Jesus is the word made flesh. In other words, the whole of the Old Testament ultimately points to him and what he would do for us. He would bring us back into relationship with God the Father through His life, His sacrifice for, of Himself on the cross for our sins, His death, His, His resurrection, and His ascension into heaven. Jesus Himself says as much in John's Gospel that it, the whole of the Old Testament points to what He would do for us. He says in John's uh, Gospel chapter 14 verses 6 and 7, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know Him and you have seen Him. So Jesus is the ultimate word of our lives for our lives, our eternal lives, our, our relationship with God the Father. And there is no other way, there is no other word to relationship with God the Father except through Jesus Christ, there is no other way to get to heaven. And we need to understand this. Jesus is the only word, the only one that gives us access to God the Father, that gives us a place in heaven. There is no salvation for anybody without Jesus. I don't care what anybody says. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how many, you know, whatever you do, there is no way to God, there is no way to heaven except by Jesus Christ. But there's also a truth to this, and that truth is that there is no room for a passive acknowledgement or acceptance of this fact. We can't just mumble under our breath that Jesus is Lord. And in his letter to the church in Rome, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us that in order for this uh, uh, acceptance, this salvation to become a reality, a tangible reality, something that we can grasp in our lives, we have to use our own words. In Romans 10 verses 5 to 10, Paul writes, Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Now, I know that most of you watching me this morning or listening to me will say, but hang on here. I've already done that. I've, I've confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And, you know, I even went so far as to be baptized. 
And let me just say in all sincerity that that is an absolutely beautiful, wonderful and amazing thing. It's, it's really special. I love it when people accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and confess it and make that statement in baptism. But many of us, myself included at times, gloss over those three little words, very important words in the text. Words that we, we say rather glibly, but then go on living our lives as we would ordinarily, normally. Those words are, Jesus is Lord. And this brings me to a thought and a question that I wrestle with almost daily. How many people that I interact with every day would, would be able to come away from an interaction and a conversation with me and say of me that Jesus is my Lord? Is it evident in my life? Is it evident in my words? Or is Stephen still Lord of Stephen's life? You see, these are words we can't just say. When we say them, there has to be some evidence of it in our lives. There has to be some uh, evidence in our lives of the fact that we mean what we say. And this is where the rubber hits the road. I'd like for us to, to take the time going forward to ask ourselves the question, the serious question, what impact, what difference have my spoken words of confession that Jesus Christ eh, the word of God made flesh is Lord in my life and of my life had on my life and the lives of those around me can I also just say that if you haven't yet confessed Jesus as Lord can I encourage you to do that and do it as soon as possible and do it in front of somebody that somebody would know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And could I then encourage us all, every day, to live as if this were true. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you and firstly, we thank you so much, Father God, for your word, your word made flesh, your son, Jesus Christ. Father, what an amazing gift, what an amazing privilege that we can come to you through your son Jesus Christ. Jesus we thank you for